Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the OSI Networking Reference Model. Today I'm going to begin by talking about a brief history of the reference models, and then I'm going to talk about the network reference models themselves, and then I'm going to conclude with a comparison between OSI and TCP IP. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. So let's begin with a brief history. The Open System Interconnection Reference Model is a conceptual model with two major components. The first main component of the OSI Networking Reference Model is an abstract model of networking. It's a seven-layer model. The second major component is a set of specific protocols which allow differing computing systems to communicate with one another despite their different architecture. So why was a networking model required? Well, early networks communicated using proprietary languages. Because of those proprietary languages, early networks could only communicate with like systems. So an IBM network could only communicate with another IBM network. In addition to that, the US government desired a robust computer communication system that could survive disaster. The first networking reference model that was developed was the TCP IP reference model. The Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol reference model was published as the United States Department of Defense standard in 1982. All of the major systems manufacturers adopted the TCP IP reference model beginning in 1984. AT&T moved the Unix implementation of TCP IP to open source in 1989, further cementing TCP IP's place in networking. The OSI reference model came later than the TCP IP reference model. The OSI model was published in 1983, and it defines the relationships between differing protocols and hardware. It's time to move on to a discussion about the networking reference models in more detail. We're going to begin with the OSI reference model. It is a seven layer reference model. Layer one is also called the physical layer. It standardizes the electrical signals that networks use. It also defines cable standards and how the bits of data are placed on the physical media. Network cables and hubs are part of layer one of the OSI model. Then there's layer two, which is also called the data link layer. It's responsible for identifying the individual nodes, both the sending node and the receiving node. It also introduces an error correction method known as the frame check sequence, or FCS. Layer two is composed of two sublayers. The first of those is the logical link control layer. It is mainly responsible for flow control and error correction. Then there is the media access control layer. It is mainly responsible for node addressing. Switches and bridges are layer two devices. Then there's layer three, the network layer. It's responsible for routing functions between networks. It also identifies networks and nodes on the network. Routers are layer three devices. Then there's layer four, the transport layer. It's responsible for breaking the data into smaller pieces for the lower layers and for the actual data transport protocols, two of which are TCP and UDP. The transport layer may be required to confirm the actual delivery of the data stream and it may be required to offer error correction. And it does this through the use of TCP or transmission control protocol. Then there's layer five, the session layer. This is the layer that is responsible for establishing the initial parameters between two systems. It sets up and tears down the communication channel. Layer six, or the presentation layer, is responsible for taking data and converting it from a machine-dependent language to a machine-independent language. 
This is also the layer that has the main responsibility for encryption between networks. And finally, we have layer 7, the application layer. This is the layer that is responsible for the protocols that request services or functions from other systems. These protocols may not be the actual application. For instance, Internet Explorer is an application that uses HTTP at layer 7 to request web pages. Now let's talk about the TCP IP reference model. This is a four-layer reference model. The lowest layer is the network interface layer, which can also be known as the link layer. It handles electrical signaling, flow control, error detection, and node addressing. Then there's the internet layer. This layer handles routing functions and identifies network systems and nodes on those networks. Then there is the transport layer which handles breaking the data into more manageable pieces for the lower layers. It is also the layer that is responsible for the delivery method, which can be either reliable or unreliable, and error correction for when reliable delivery is used. And finally, there is the application layer. This layer handles requests for services from applications. It also handles translation to machine-independent languages and encryption. It also sets up and tears down communication sessions between systems. So now let's do a comparison between the OSI and TCP IP reference models. While TCP IP is the dominant model, most technicians communicate issues using the OSI model because it is more specific. When a problem occurs, and believe me, they will, it is easier to resolve them with the more highly defined set of specifications of the OSI model versus the specifications of the TCP IP model. It's easier to resolve an issue at the session layer of the OSI model than it is to track down what went wrong in the application layer of the TCP IP model. Both the OSI and TCP IP models are reference models only. It is not mandatory that they be followed. Each developer and manufacturer determines its own method of implementing the reference models. While in theory there will never be a problem in communicating between devices and systems, remember, it is only a theory. Now that concludes this session on the OSI networking reference model. I began with a brief history, then I moved on to the networking reference models themselves, and then I did a very brief OSI and TCP IP comparison. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.